Hey guys, welcome to another pickup video. I am sorry that unfortunately I didn't have one for last month, but I got so few games in November that I figured I would just uh, slump November and December together and give you one big video for both months. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's start off with November and I'll catch you guys up on what you missed. So the first thing that I got in November was uh, pretty much a necessity. Um, <laughs> I got Super Mario Odyssey. Um, I didn't get it on launch day, unfortunately, and I love to get games on launch day, but it just wasn't happening. I didn't have the money at the time, but I got it a couple weeks later in November, and I'm super happy. I'm still playing through it right now, actually, and I am super satisfied with it. It is probably one of my favorite Mario games, and that's saying a lot because I grew up with pretty much all of them, and this one has taken the cake. It's still not my favorite Mario game. That's always going to be Sunshine. I'm just... that's who I am, but... Mario Odyssey is a fantastic Mario game. I recommend it if you like Mario and you have a Nintendo Switch. There's really no reason you shouldn't own this game. Alright, so those of you who know that I collect video games know that I collect uh, a lot of Nintendo stuff pretty much first and foremost. They are the company uh, with whom I grew up the most and they mean the most to me as far as um, being a collector. As you can see, I have quite a lot of NES games that I collected over these last two months and except for one other game, um, all the rest of these are going to be NES games. I just came into a lot of NES games recently, and I'm pretty happy with what I've got. So here's the NES games, and the rest of the games in total that I got in November. Um, so this one is Hoops for NES. It's a basketball game, because Hoops. Uh, it's actually not a game I've played, but I am excited to play it. Pretty much with every game that I haven't played, I'm excited to play. And I'm glad that I picked it up. There's really not too much I can say about it. I did actually get another basketball game, though. So I'll do that one next. And boom, here it is, Double Dribble. Double Dribble is a game I have played. It's another basketball game, like I said, but this one's special because it's by Konami. And Konami makes damn good games, and including Double Dribble, which is a pretty significant uh, sports game for the NES. And although I'm not the biggest fan of sports games, this one is a staple for the NES collection. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't have it before. Um, so I picked this up. Um, along with Hoops and the other four games that I'm going to talk about for November uh, from somebody that I, um, from someone in a group that I follow on Facebook called Long Island Retro Gaming and they were selling a couple of games for really cheap staples that I really didn't have so I drove out to pick them up and this is one of them. Double Dribble is a fantastic sports game. Um, if you like basketball, you'll like Double Dribble, even if you're not into really old games. It's actually a pretty good one. I recommend it. And I actually played basketball in my um, in my adolescence. I was part of a uh, police athletic league for um, Hicksville, where I grew up before I moved to Islip. And unfortunately, I, uh, I never really did much there. I think I got one basket the whole time. But I am good at basketball, it's just that everybody expected me not to be because I was kind of dorky and shitty. <laughs> so I never really got the chance to play. But I am good at basketball, I promise you that. And uh, that comes out tenfold when I play Double Dribble. Alright, let's talk about shitty games that are still staples of the NES library. It's Hydlide, or if you prefer to pronounce it Hidlide, but whatever. I pronounce it Hydlide, and uh, I don't... <sighs> I, nobody likes this game. If you like this game, you're lying, and that's okay. I can deal with a few lies in my life. I've been told very many by by many different people. Um, but I do. I you know what? Actually, no. I won't stand for you to say that you like Hide Light. It's not a good game. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it is a so it, it actually Hide Light first came out for uh, certain Japanese PCs before it hit the NES, and uh, it actually came out before the Legend of Zelda. But a lot of people think that it's a Zelda clone. It actually came beforehand. Um, but with that being said, I'm still going to use that terminology because Zelda is widely known a lot more than Highlight is. So it's a Zelda clone um, that unfortunately just doesn't have very good mechanics. The combat is very clunky and shitty. The enemies suck. The there's a leveling up system, uh, so there, there is an experience growth system, which Zelda doesn't have, but you still feel like you're growing throughout the game. Uh, in Hydlide, you level up, but you always still feel weak. It really sucks. I don't like it. And the music rips heavily off of the Indiana Jones theme. Play it if you like to torture yourself. Alright, here's another sports game that I'm actually not too big a fan of, but it is a staple for the NES collection, and that's Bases Loaded. 
uh, Bases Loaded is a game by Jaleco, and it is infamous among collectors just as a physical cartridge for being one of the Jaleco games where they stapled their name to the fucking spine instead of the name of the game. This makes it extremely stupid looking when it's in your collection with the spine sticking out and it says Jaleco instead of Bases Loaded. Now they fixed this with the sequel Bases Loaded 2, which uh, I may have also gotten in December, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's no fixing this error. Jaleco, suck a dick. Other than video games, I like to play a lot of board games, and I like to play a lot of strategy board games, and one of the classical strategy board games that I enjoy playing, and I particularly consider myself pretty good at, is chess. I consider myself a chess master, the chess master, which, by the way, on Super Nintendo has a bitchin' theme song, but on NES, eh, I don't really know. The Chess Master is a game where you play chess on your Nintendo Entertainment System. It was made by High Tech Expressions, who are pretty notorious for making damn good games for the Nintendo Entertainment System, but then they went ahead and made the Chess Master. I'm not saying it's a bad game, but they probably could have used their resources on something a little bit more awesome. Although I do like chess, the Chess Master is not a suitable substitute to sitting down with an opponent in real life and playing a game of chess. But it is nice looking. Look at that. Uh, look at the chess master. He's like, I want to play some chess? And you're like, sure. But all my friends are away and nobody likes me because I'm a terrible person. Well, that's okay. I can't judge you because I don't actually have feelings. Let's play chess. You got it. So my girlfriend Kayla and I, who, yes, you heard that correctly, is now my girlfriend because I seem to be that suave. Uh, <laughs> we were watching some angry video game nerd videos and um, she wanted to see the episode on Super Pitfall just to kind of get an idea of what kind of a crappy game it is. And it just so happened I didn't own it. And it just so happened that when I went to meet this gentleman from whom I bought the NES games in November, he actually had Super Pitfall in that list of games and I picked it up from him. So now Kayla and I are going to play some Super Pitfall and it's still not going to be fun. <laughs> But yeah, Super Pitfall is the sequel, if you don't count Pitfall 2, I guess, to Pitfall on Atari 2600. Uh, it was developed by Activision, the same people who made the original Pitfall, and uh, it's just not good. I don't understand why it's not good, or like, well, I mean, I understand why it's not good because I played it, but I don't understand why they made it so badly, considering Pitfall is a classic, and even Pitfall 2 the actual sequel to Pitfall is another classic. I don't understand why this game got kind of left in the dust. Were they just not working on it well? I need to look more into the history of the game. But Super Pitfall is a game where you just explore around and objects appear at random and you have to find things at random and the whole game is cryptic and it doesn't tell you where to go or what to do and you're completely directionless unless you own the internet. Which, when this game came out, you didn't. So congratulations, if you bought this when you were a youngin' back in the day when the NES was popular, you wasted some money. Oops. Okay, let's move on to no to uh, December, I should say. And uh, I was able to pick up one Wii U game and then this whole slew of other NES games. So let's get the Wii U game out of the way first. I finally got DuckTales Remastered. I'm a huge fan of DuckTales, the TV show, as well as DuckTales, the NES game. The Moon is probably one of my favorite NES tunes of all time, and I just didn't pick this up when it first came out. Um, I don't know why, probably it, it was either money or I just had a lot of other things going on, but I didn't get the chance to pick it up for Wii U. I finally did because somebody gave me a gift card to GameStop, which I'm not, I'm not I hate GameStop, <laughs> but um, I don't want their money to go to waste considering it already paid for the gift card, for me not to use the gift card would just be wasting your money on GameStop's crappy storefront. So I actually used the money from the gift card to get myself Disney's DuckTales Remastered, a fantastic game. If you haven't played the original, please play the original, but if you don't have the means to or don't want to emulate and you own a modern console such as the Wii U, pick this up because it's a pretty suitable substitute. It's still made by Capcom, the people who made the original DuckTales, and it is fantastic. It is a great, absolutely perfectly suitable remake. I'm very happy that I bought this. 
Throughout my entire life, I have really not had many enemies. I consider myself a pretty personable human being, but when I pop this next game into my NES, my enemy becomes Jason. It's Friday the 13th, the sometimes good, most of the time not good game for the Nintendo Entertainment System by LJN. Look at that rainbow. They're famous for making bad games, and I'm famous for making fun of them. Friday the 13th, if you don't know, is a video game based off of the movie Friday the 13th, where Jason, this man in a mask, tries to kill a bunch of camp counselors because when he was a kid, spoilers, but the movie is like a billion years old anyway. When he was a kid, he was at Camp Crystal Lake, and then the counselors decided to have sex instead of watching him, and he drowned in the lake, and now he's mad. And his mom is also mad, and you're mad if you play this game. But it's a staple of the NES library, so there it is. Hey, son. Yeah, Dad? What do you say if you're a not to hear anymore? I say I'm a gone. I'm a gone for NES. <laughs> <coughs> Just close out of this video right now, it's okay. Amagon for NES. I actually had this game um, when I got my my NES a long time ago. I had a Famicom NES before I started collecting, and this was one of the games that I picked up from Game Crazy in Lindenhurst. Now, um, all of these NES games that I got here, I also got from Long Island Retro Gaming on Facebook through another gentleman. My girlfriend Kayla and I drove to his workplace to pick them up from him, and it was like this really strange, like, shady backdoor deal that actually ended up being really cool. I spent, uh, I spent a hefty sum of money, but I got 31 great NES games out of it, and they are all pretty much staples of the NES library. Amagon is, a, is an action platformer similar to Mario, where you can grow and shrink, and you also have a gun, but then you also jump around a lot, and it's actually pretty fun. I don't consider it a bad game. Some people do, um, but I don't. I think it's really fun. If you're an art student and you're first learning how to draw genitalia, you might want to grab yourself some tracing paper and get a little Dick Tracy first. Dick Tracy is a fictional private eye who became popular in different media like books, movies, and television, and he also got his own NES game developed by Bandai. Dick Tracy is not a very good game. Um, if you've seen the Angry Video Game Nerd review of it, you understand why, but it's not very fun. It's a little bit clunky, and there are driving segments that just don't make a whole lot of sense. Overall, the game is a detective game. It's an action... I wouldn't consider it a platformer, really, although there are platforming elements in it, but overall, it's more like an action-adventure game. And you're Dick Tracy going around trying to figure out who done it. So... Who done it? You tell me, because I really kind of don't want to play this, but I will eventually. Maybe it'll be fun. Remember that time when I talked about Bases Loaded 1 and I said I might have gotten Bases Loaded 2? Well, I didn't lie. Why would you think I would lie to you? Right? We don't even know each other that well. You think I want to start off by giving you a first impression of myself as a liar? Look, it's Bases Loaded 2 by Jaleco. They fixed the spine issue. Look, it says Bases Loaded 2. It doesn't say Jaleco. I don't really have much to say about this game. It's Bases Loaded 2, second season. That's the full title. I talked about Bases Loaded 1. Just pretend that every time I talked about Bases Loaded 1, I talked about Bases Loaded 2. Except for the Julie Go on the Spine thing. Now we're done with this game. What grades do mermaid students get? Below sea level. It's The Little Mermaid by Capcom for Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a fantastic game, and I love it. My sister growing up was a bigger fan of The Little Mermaid than I was, but I really like The Little Mermaid. I don't know what it is about it, but I think there's just... There's an element of romance to old Disney cartoons that really spoke to my heart because growing up I was a very passionate and romantic person. Um, but some people don't appreciate that sort of thing, and that's okay because they can go fuck themselves because I've got The Little Mermaid on NES, and I have all the love I need right here. It is a side-scrolling pseudo-platformer where you're Ariel trying to be the Little Mermaid. And it's really, really fun. And I didn't have it! And I'm so glad I do now. Ah, oh, oh, under the sea. Under the sea. Life's better when you're a collector under the sea. You know what else is under the sea? Jaws, the shark. He's a shark and he's in my Nintendo. Look, it's another LJN game. See that? See that shitty rainbow right there? 
it's another really bad movie tie-in game, just like Friday the 13th, except this time, the person who is not a person, but is instead a shark, is Jaws. It's not Jason, but they both start with J. Maybe it's Jawson. I don't know. Jawson's creep? More like Jawson's cheek getting punched by my fist because he's an asshole, and he does not deserve to live because he's trying to kill everybody, and you're trying to kill him. It's Jaws. Have you seen the movie Jaws? Everyone's seen the movie Jaws. If you haven't, you're lying to yourself. And if you actually haven't, then you're definitely lying to yourself by letting yourself live your life without having seen Jaws. He's a shark. He's in my Nintendo. What's the best thing about pinball? If you said pinball tie-in games for consoles that actually can't accurately show what pinball is like and give you a real experience, then you're wrong. The best thing about pinball is playing regular ass pinball, but that didn't stop a whole bunch of companies from making pinball video games that don't accurately replicate the feel of real pinball. It's Rollerball. Rollerball was made by HAL Laboratory, the same people who made Kirby, but despite the fact that HAL Laboratory is a fantastic company and makes really good games, they made Rollerball. I'm not a fan of Rollerball because it's not real pinball. I'm not a fan of Unreal Pinball. That's really all I can say about the game because I really don't want to play it. But I will anyway because that's who I am. And maybe someday I'll have a little bit less of a jaded opinion toward uh, pinball video games. But there you go. The only pinball video games that I really enjoyed growing up were Pokemon Pinball and that's pretty much it. Maybe Space Cadet on PC if anyone remembers that. But yeah, Rollerball. Happy, happy New Year. So this is a game I already owned because I had the Japanese version of it for the family computer disc system. But I finally got Ice Hockey for NES, which is a really good hockey game. It's not too intense, it's kind of cartoony. My buddy Tyler, if you remember back in August, he came to visit me and say hello and we went game collecting together. We actually played the Famicom disc version. Um, he's Canadian, so he was trying to beat the shit out of his American counterpart, but uh, little did he know that I would actually lose and he would win because he's way better at hockey and he knows more about the sport than I do because I really don't follow sports at all except golf. It's ice hockey. Really good sports game, actually. Uh, even if you don't like hockey, you can get a kick out of ice hockey. I'm not really a big fan of hockey, and I love this game, so pick it up, play it. So, there's a game called Green Beret that when it was released in America, they changed the name for whatever reason to Russian Attack. So I picked it up. Russian Attack. Uh, it was, one, again, one of the games that came in that big lot of 31 that I got from that gentleman off of Long Island Retro Gaming on Facebook. Um, I really don't know too much about Russian Attack because I've never played it. I just know about the history behind it and the name change from Green Beret. So there's really not too much I can say about it, but because I bought it, I have to show it here. It's Russian Attack. Growing up, I was not a big fan of action movies, and I still am not really. I prefer comedies or even romance movies. Uh, I know I'm kind of a sap for saying that, but that's just the type of person I am, and you can suck it. So um, I really didn't watch any... Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies growing up, other than Jingle All the Way, which is my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and my favorite Christmas movie. Um, but yeah, it's Total Recall. I didn't see the movie, so I don't really know what the game is about, but I assume that it's going to be okay. Um, a lot of people say that the Arnold Schwarzenegger tie-in games aren't the best, and I, I've seen gameplay footage of them, but I haven't really played them myself, so I can't really say for sure. Um, but I got Total Recall, and I actually got another Arnold Schwarzenegger game, so I'll show that one off next. Baboom! T2, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Now this one I know is bad because it's got that beautiful rainbow right there by LJM. Um, but yeah, the, again, haven't seen any of the Terminator movies, don't really care to. I'm sorry if that offends you, I just, I'm not really a big fan of action movies. But yeah, there you go, Terminator 2. It's gotta be bad. All right, let's talk about a good game for once. Uh, this is Trojan. Trojan is a uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up slash platformer made by Capcom, uh, which was originally released in arcades, but then it got ported to Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, you play as a dude in a purple jumpsuit with a sword trying to fuck shit up. And boy howdy, if it doesn't really make you want to fuck shit up, because it's a really fun game. This was another one of the games that I used to play on my Famiclo and NES before I became a collector. And I loved it, it was really fun. I would always go back to play it, and I could never beat it. So now that I finally own it again as an adult, I'm ready to finally go back and show this game who's boss. All right, still on the topic of good games for once, it's RC Pro-Am, which is a game made by Rare, the same people who made 
Banjo-Kazooie, which is probably what they're most famous for. RC Pro-Am is a car racing game, uh, but it's actually a really good one. You don't have to be into cars or into racing to be into RC Pro-Am. It's actually really fun. I recommend it to pretty much anybody who's into video games in general. And it has a bitchin' soundtrack. I really love it. And again, it was made by Rare. So how terrible could it be? This game, since I became a collector, has pretty much escaped me. And it's always been either too expensive, couldn't find it, or just I, I didn't pick it up for whatever reason because I always thought, ah, I can get it later. And I guess I've thought of that about a lot of games. I remember I talked about that with Golf um, back in October. But I finally got Life Force, which is a vertical and horizontal scrolling space shooter that is in, well, it's kind of in the Gradius excuse me, series. Um, it is called Salamander in Japan, and for whatever reason they called it Life Force here in North America. It is a fantastic game, and I, I love the shit out of this game. I used to play this game on emulator, and I, I can't believe I finally own it. It's probably the happiest, um, or the game that I'm happiest that I picked up these past two months. Uh, I'm going to have a ton of fun playing this, and I hope that I can play it with a couple other people because I'm getting tired of playing games all by myself, damn it. Life Force is awesome. You owe it to yourself to play this game. It is a staple of video games in general, and I'm happy that it's finally a part of my NES collection. All right, here's a game I really don't know too much about, so I'm just kind of going to show it, say a couple sentences, and then go on to the next game. Look, it's Racket Attack. Racket Attack is a tennis game made by Julico except they actually put Racket Attack on the spine. I'm really happy that I own Racket Attack, just because it's another game that I don't have to worry about buying later. It's Racket Attack. Yeah. Once upon a time there was fighting. Once upon a time there was golf. Once upon a time there was Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf. It is a golf game starring Lee Trevino, professional golf athlete, as you fight your way through 18 holes of pure carnage. It's a golf game that tries to pass itself off as not a good golf game, and it succeeds. I don't like this game. It's not very fun. But I like golf, so what does that say about me as a person? It says we're moving on to the next game. Enjoy this man's sweet fist bump. Part of the joy of being a linguist means that I know how to pronounce words that other people don't know how to pronounce. Which is why I know that this next game is pronounced Astyanax. Astyanax used to be an arcade, well, I mean, it, it still exists as an arcade game, but before it was ported to NES, it was an arcade game called The Astyanax. Astyanax is a figure in Greek mythology, and he's brought to life here through this young man who is named for him, and he gets to run through his side-scrolling platform or beat him up and crack the shit out of enemy skulls using a sword that can change form into other types of weapons, and it's actually pretty fun. It's another one of those games made by Jaleco where they decided not to put their name on the spine! Yay! Jaleco, you learned by that point. Oh, I'm so happy. I love this game, so I'm glad that I picked it up. I have an arcade multi-cabinet where I play this game a lot, but I finally got it on NES. It's Arkanoid. Now, unfortunately, the only way to truly play this game on your Nintendo Entertainment System is with a special controller that came with the game when it first came out called the Vaus Controller. And I do not own the Vaus Controller, so I really can't play this, but I will get it eventually. Arkanoid is a Breakout clone that, in my opinion, is superior to Breakout. Instead of just batting a ball around and killing bricks, you actually get power-ups when you break certain bricks, and they can help you break more bricks to beat the levels faster. Instead of just block patterns of like rectangles and squares, every level is unique, and the bricks form a certain picture sometimes, and it's actually really, really cool. I recommend Arkanoid if you are a fan of old video games in general, or just, you know, action puzzle games, and especially if you like Breakout, Arkanoid is way better you will get your kicks out of this. You can actually play it online um, if, you look, if you Google Javanoid. It is a Java clone of Arkanoid. So get your kicks out of that too. Arkanoid's fantastic and I recommend it. Have fun. All right, so a lot of you people out there know that um, back in the day, companies used to make video games for the Nintendo Entertainment System without Nintendo's permission. Those were unlicensed games because they didn't obtain a license from Nintendo to manufacture for their console. And I was actually able to pick up an unlicensed game 
it's RBI Baseball. Now, RBI Baseball was eventually licensed, but I have the unlicensed copy, and I will eventually get the licensed copy, too. There's a long, litigious story behind it that I won't bother explaining here because it'll take seven years, but let's just say Nintendo wasn't happy that RBI Baseball was unlicensed, so they said, hey, you better fucking license this game from us or we're gonna take your ass to court and beat the shit out of you. And Tengen, who is, by the way, actually Atari using a different name, said, all right, let us think about that. And considering there's a licensed copy of it, I guess you can see where that went. So, RBI Baseball. It's a baseball game, and that's really all I can say about it. I don't understand why so many different companies thought that they would be cutting edge by making different baseball games with different names, and they're all just fucking baseball. Really, only one or two of them stand out. RBI Baseball really isn't one of them. Um, although it is a pretty good baseball game, and I do enjoy it, there's really nothing too special about it other than the history behind it and the fact that it's an unlicensed cart. And uh, this is actually the bottom of the cartridge. For whatever reason, they decided to make the picture upside down. Beats me. All right, here's a good game. Tiger Heli. It is a scroller that's actually pretty damn fun. You're a helicopter and you're not actually a tiger, which is a little bit disappointing if you ask me. Um, before I went in to buy these games from that gentleman from the Facebook group, I actually I was with Kayla, and I made a Tiger Heli joke just out of thin air because it was on my mind. And it turned out, Tiger Heli was actually one of the games in that big lot. And I was pretty pleased with myself for having some foresight. Uh, I'm really going to enjoy playing this game, and it's a lot of fun. It, uh, it was an arcade title before it came out for NES, and I really enjoy it, so... Tiger Heli. Alright, so perhaps one of the most infamous titles in video games in general, and it just screams late 80s, early 90s, is Ultra Games Skate or Die, which I would love to talk more about, but I know more about its uh, successor, which I also have. Skate or Die 2, The Search for Double Trouble, which unfortunately I can't seem to get this crappy red permanent marker off of and I'm very, very unhappy about that. Skate or Die 2 is infamous for many reasons, besides being Skate or Die's sequel and being a game where you have to choose between skating or not skating, otherwise known in this context as taking a big fat death, or dying if you prefer, uh, is actually famous for having one of the most bitchin', and I keep using that word because I'm stuck in the 90s, theme songs of any video game. And uh, I'm not going to put it in this video because I don't want to disturb anybody, but please look up the theme song to Skate or Die 2. And it has probably the most radical subtitle, The Search for Double Trouble, because you're a bad kid and you don't play by anyone's rules. We're looking for double trouble, damn it. And it's going to be double and trouble. Skate or Die 2. Oh, yeah, and Skate or Die 1. Look, look at them. They're so fantastic. Ah. Die, 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 die. Once upon a time, in a land called my life, there was a power pad for the Nintendo Entertainment System that I never got. And I still don't have it. But that doesn't stop me from buying games that I can't play because they require it. It's super teen games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Look at that. Power pad required. I can't play this game, so I can't really talk about it, and I don't know too much about it, so let's move right on to the next one, shall we? If you are like me, you enjoy having some romance with your lady friend, and there is an NES game suitable to describe that feeling. Unfortunately, I don't have that game, and instead, I have Bump and Jump. Like that one? I like that one. I don't... I don't like that one. Bump and Jump is a game where you're in a buggy with your friends, and you have to not die. It's actually really fun and it was an arcade title before it got poured into NES, like a lot of the ones that I ended up picking up from this group. It's super fun, I recommend it, but I actually haven't played too much of it, so I can't speak very well of it. But I will try. Here I go. <clears throat> Bump and Jump is really good playing. There are three types of dreams. You might think there are only two, but there are three types of dreams. A good dream, a bad dream, and a Vegas dream. Vegas Dream is a role-playing casino game for Nintendo where you have to make a lot of money and marry a lot of people and be happy with your winnings. It was made by HAL Laboratory, the same people who made Kirby and the same people who decided to make Rollerball 
but this game's actually pretty fun. I enjoy it. And uh, that's really all I can say about it because I'm not a big fan of gambling games. Um, but yeah, here you go. It's Vegas Dream. You like that intro with the, with the good dream, bad dream, Vegas Dream? Because I don't have a script, uh, really. Like, I, I just, I have some index cards here, but they're really just like, check it out. It's notes for Ocarina of Time Sculpture List. That's really it. Vegas Dream. All right, so there were other companies besides Julico that decided it would be okay to not put the name of the game on the spine. So what game is this? And I don't, I don't know if you can tell because the quality on this camera is shit, but it says Mad, which refers to Mad TV or Mad Magazine. But the game is actually Spy vs. Spy. I'm really pissy about my end labels, and this is one of those times. Spy vs. Spy is a game where you have to spy on the other spy before he spies on you, and then there's just a whole bunch of spying going on. Really, someone should get the police involved, if you ask me. I don't know very much about this game because I haven't played it, and I haven't really cared to look up gameplay footage of it, but it is considered a staple of the NES library. I had it in my backlog of games to pick up because I knew that, so now I have to play it. Oh boy. It makes me mad. In life, you can win, you can lose, or you can draw. And if you own a Nintendo, you can do all three at the same time with win, lose, or draw. It is a video game based off of the game show Win, Lose, or Draw, where you either win, lose, or draw. I never watched the game show, I've never played the game. I can't say too much about it. Are you sensing a theme with this video? Because I am, because I'm making it, and I hate myself for it. But I'm glad I picked up the game. Alright, here's a game I am super satisfied that I picked up. It is Xevious the Avenger. Xevious is one of my favorite arcade classics. It was made by Namco, and I just, I fucking love Xevious. For whatever reason, they gave it the subtitle The Avenger on Nintendo. I really don't know why, but it's the same damn game. Xevious is a vertical scrolling shooter um, that does not take place in space, apparently. And it's super fun, although the music is a little repetitive, but it does get launched into your brain and it stays there for quite a while, so you can never forget it, which makes it classic in a semi-good way. Um, I love Xevious and I recommend it to anybody who's a fan of old school arcade games and a fan of shooters in general. Um, it is really fun and I enjoy it, so I'm glad that I got it. And again, even though it's one of those games I love, I really like it when the whole title is on the spine, and although it is Xevious the Avenger, I don't know if you can tell, but it does say that there, the spine only says Xevious, and that makes me a little mad because I'm just that annoyed at small things. Maybe I have a problem, and that problem is totally justified. Come on, fuck, fucking, come on, bro, bro, Bandai, Namco, come on. Again, I wasn't a fan of action movies growing up, so I never saw Rambo. But I have played the game, I just never owned it. It's not a very good game, but boy, am I finally happy that I picked it up. Rambo is a side-scrolling run-and-gun game with platforming elements where you play as John Rambo. A Sylvester Stallone played character who in the game is not played by Sylvester Stallone because it's impossible to act in an 8-bit video game because there are sprites and stuff. But there you go, it's Rambo. It was made by Acclaim if you couldn't tell by the big Acclaim logo here. And the name of the game is Rambo if you couldn't tell by the big title it says Rambo here. It's got guns in it but you couldn't tell probably from this big gun right there. And uh, yeah, that's really a all I can say about it. It's not a good game. Don't play it. It's really not. It won't satisfy your thirst for John Rambo beauty. It'll only make you upset that you bought this game thinking, hey, it's a run and gun game similar to Rambo, well, that happens to also be called Rambo. And that's exactly what it is. It's not a Rambo game. It's a game where you pretend you're playing a Rambo game. Fuck this game. Glad I have it. All right, let's talk Simpsons. It's The Simpsons, Bartman meets Radioactive Man. Not a terribly good game, but it is a, again, it's an NES collection staple, so I'm glad that I picked it up. It's uh, one of the many Simpsons games that were released for the NES. There's like fucking 17,000 of them. Actually, there's only like four or so. 
But yeah, check it out. It's it's this one. Ooh, cool. You can tell I'm really happy I have this, right? And we've come to that point. We have reached the final game in the series of games that I picked up these past two months. It's everybody's favorite, and it's actually a good game. I'm not being sarcastic. It is Tecmo's Solomon's Key. Solomon's Key is a puzzle platforming game where you move from level to level trying to solve puzzles and avoid enemies and stuff. It's really quirky and it's super fun. And if you like puzzle games in any, uh, pretty much in, at any degree, uh, you would enjoy Solomon's Key. Um, it's got a beautiful soundtrack and the main character's name is Dana. And I don't know why that has anything to do with how cool the game is. I just thought that, you know, for an early, like, NES title, um, for the main character in a pretty much standalone game to have a, you know, name that wasn't really heard of very much at the time. So enjoy Solomon's Key as you play as Dana, the wizard thing, elf boy, something. Unlock Solomon's secrets while you unlock new happiness playing Solomon's Key. And that's everything that I picked up over the course of November and December. Everybody, I hope you had a fantastic holiday season. I hope you have a great and happy and healthy new year. I know that I will. What are your resolutions? Tell me in the comments down below if you care to let me know. Uh, my resolutions this year are pretty much um, I'm going to officially call myself a vegan, even though I've already started taking steps toward doing that. And I, I'm not going to preach about it. I'm just saying that's one of my resolutions. And I want to keep a jar of compliments I've received over the year. And then next New Year's, I want to open that jar and take a look at all the cool compliments that people have paid me. It's a little bit of a, um, of a new take on the whole, write down all the nice things that have happened to you. Because uh, I've done that before, but I've wanted to do something new. So I figure this time I will write down all the nice things people have said to me and what the context was so I can see all the nice things that people have said about me or to me. And that'll be really fun and it'll make my next New Year start off really, really nicely. And who knows, maybe I'll do it again. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get back to doing monthly pickup videos because now that the holidays are over and I have more money again, I'm going to start picking up games monthly and going back to yard sales and doing all that beautiful bullshit that I do so well. Uh, thank you all so very much for watching, and thanks to the people who helped me grab games this, this, uh, these last two months. Uh, you're all beautiful. Thank you, my lovely girlfriend Kayla, for putting up with my collection, and thank you pretty much to everybody for watching. I love you all. Have yourself a great New Year.